Okay guys, in this video, let us have a look at symbols in ES2015. So in ES5, we have the existing primitive types, strings, num, boolean, null, and undefined. But now, ES2015 introduced a new primitive type known as symbols. And the purpose of a symbol is to generate a unique ID. But the funny thing is that we never get access to that ID. And that is sort of a good thing as we are going to be seeing later on in this video. So let us understand how to create a new symbol and what could be the possible use of that symbol. So to create a new symbol, we invoke the symbol function. So let s equals symbol. Now if you try to use the new keyword here, it is going to throw an error. And we are going to be ignoring the red squiggly for now. So let s equals symbol. And now when we try to log to the console, type of s, let's save this, head over to the browser, it says symbol. So now in ES2015, we have a new type known as symbol. And we can also pass an optional symbol description while creating a symbol. So within parentheses, we can specify a string. So we can just call this first symbol. And now when we log symbol or s dot to string, we can get access to this description. So when I save this and refresh, there you go. Symbol with description first symbol. So when we call the to string method on the symbol, we get the description. Okay, so now let's create two more symbols. Let s2 is equal to symbol and let s3 equals symbol. Now I'm going to log to the console s2 triple equals s3. So what do you think the output is going to be? True or false? So let's save this and head over to the browser. It's false. So therefore a symbol always creates a unique ID. So this symbol has a different ID from this symbol. So S2 and S3 are different. But now let's pass a description. Test and over here, let's pass the same description, test. So now what do you think the output is going to be? Let's save this. It's still false. So it doesn't matter what the description is, a symbol is always going to create a unique ID. Now let's say that we have created a new symbol, but we need to get hold of that symbol so that we can use the same symbol again in a different or the same file. So for that purpose, we have a built-in symbol registry. So to add a symbol to the registry, we use the symbol.for method. So we can create a symbol also using symbol.for. So let s4 is equal to symbol.for. And we need to pass a description. So let's pass this as reg symbol or registry symbol. And here's the thing though. Symbol.for doesn't add the symbol right away. It checks if a symbol with the key reg symbol already exists in the registry. If it does, it will return that symbol over here to S4. If it doesn't exist, then it will create a new symbol in the registry. So let's also do let S5 is equal to symbol dot for symbol symbol dot for and let's use the same reg symbol. So now let's do a log to the console s4 triple equals s5. So when I save this and head over to the browser, symbol is not defined. Let me change this to caps, change this also to caps and let's save this. And there you go, it's true. So what happened here is that when we did a symbol dot for on the first time, a new symbol was created in the global registry with this description. And when symbol.for was called again with the same description, 
this symbol was retrieved and stored in S5. So now S4 and S5, both the symbols are the same. We have no clue as to what the ID for these two symbols are, but we just know that they're equal. Now let's say we want the key that was associated with the symbol when the symbol was added to the global registry. So for that, we have another use, we have another method to make use of called symbol.keyfor. So let's say console.log symbol.keyfor let's pass S4. So when I save this and head over to the browser, symbol is not defined. Okay, let me change this back. Refresh and reg symbol. So the symbol.key4 is going to give us a key for a symbol. So when we come across a symbol and we are not sure what it is used for, we can use this method to get the description. So now I know that this symbol was actually used to set up a symbol in the global registry. So red symbol. Okay, now that we know symbol is used to create a unique ID, a good place to use them or use symbols is in object properties. So we can have a new symbol, let f name is equal to symbol. And then we can create a new object, let person is equal to, and by using the bracket notation, we can use the symbol over here, f name as the property. So f name colon Chandler as the name. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have created a unique property inside this object. So we never have to worry about our code conflicting with existing methods or being accidentally overwritten because this property is always going to be unique. And the, the last thing I would like to point out is that when we try to log to the console object dot get own property names and pass person. Okay, let me change this to person. And when I save this, we don't get this property first name listed out because it is in fact a symbol. So we need to use another static method which is now present in ES6, namely get own property symbols. So instead of names, symbols, and let's save this. And there you go, symbol. And if I pass, let's say first, name and save this there you go symbol of first name so this is the new static method in ES6 which we can use to list the symbols used for an object so that's pretty much it about the basics of a symbol thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video